Okay. Now we are recording. So today on Squad Every Day, I'm going to give you a little peek into the podcast that we do every week. This is Dr. Bobby Riley. I'm Dr. John Sobolski. This is the Anatomy of Therapy. What are the biggest mistakes you can make when you work out? What are routine workout mistakes that everybody makes? We're going to go over this. We're going to see how many we can get in 15 minutes all the workout routine mistakes. If you have mistakes that you think people make, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't left a comment already because you love this so much, hit the like button, please subscribe. Uh, but yeah, this is a peek into the podcast. Let's get into it. How, what, okay, so let's start at the very beginning of the workout. Like you enter into the gym, or maybe even before the gym, what are pre-workout mistakes? For me, big bowl of spaghetti. One, don't, don't do that. What, what carb are you loading? Carb load. Like how, how early before your workout do you eat? Like what's the latest? Cause I'm like, I almost want to go in starved personally. Yeah. I, you know, this is definitely has to be personal preference. You have people yeah. like Jeff Nippard. I think he's a big fan of getting a, like exact amount of carbohydrates one right. hour before training and and I do quite well on an empty stomach, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe if it was going to be really heavy or something, then I, I would have a little bit more, a really high volume. I'd have some meal within two hours maybe of training. But right. but then you got people that tell me that they can, you know, I listen to George, George St. Pierre just say his training didn't even go down on a three-day fast. And to me, that's, I'm sure mine would, but I'm not George St. Pierre. So <laughs> yeah, he's a um, yeah, so I think this one really just depends. But I, I don't think it's... It's like the value meal at Burger King, probably. You know what I mean, or yeah. or, or 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 you know the you know the the uh, perpetual bulkers who are you know pop tarts yeah. and uh, and your bowl your bowl of spaghetti before deadlift day, I like mean, as the, if you're gonna yeah. destroy all your glycogen in your in your five sets of three uh, pulls. But that's what they, they they're chewing on, you know, uh, sour patch kids between sets, bro. I mean, so. Look, I mean, it depends on what your workout is. But for me, I always think about it like sports. Like if I'm pl playing a game in high school when playing in college, like I don't want anything, maybe like an hour. If it's an hour before the game, like I'm not even messing with food, maybe some water or some stuff. But like I, I, my belly does not do good with food and workout. Mm -hmm. So that's an obvious one. Okay, let's get into the workout. You've obviously, you know, eaten a whole bag of Sour Patch Kids. Now you're at the gym first mistake in the gym. What I do first, I think is to load up as many plates on the bench rack as you can, and then just get it, just go for it. Like warm up. What are warm up mistakes? How, how long is a long warm up? What's a short warm up? What's like the bare minimum warm up for people? I think that one depends too, but on your point, like this idea of yeah. just working up to your one rep max yeah. uh, or your two rep max or three rep max. And then that's mm -hmm. the end of that workout. Yeah. I mean, this has to be, this is uh, ubiquitous in every gym. I think, you know, oh, this, dude. you know, you get on the bench and you can see them just do a couple light and then they're, they're jumping up a ton immediately and they can do it yeah. for barely two. And then they max out at two after that and then they're done. Right. And there's just, there's not enough stimulus. And this is, you know, me and you were complaining about clinicians under, under loading the, the, mm -hmm. the patient, thinking that this is the stimulus is going to do enough to change that person's patellar tendon. We're complaining about the clinic. Right. And I think it's the same in the gym where, um, you know, they, it's weird because there's two sides of this coin. There's the mm. work up really heavy, really fast, and you're done, right. which doesn't doesn't really give you that kind of stimulus that you want. And then right. there's the people that do tons and tons of volume as if that's going to, you know, turn them into Ronnie Coleman or something like that, where, right. where it's really this, it's a bit of a fine balance between these things. But, but it's funny when you, when you really read like maybe the, the most complex material on this, like by Brad Schoenfeld or Andy Galpin or all these people, mm -hmm. they, it really comes down to a pretty easy system to follow, but people yeah. just, for some reason, always like, whatever the, the coolest squat program is or the you know bench every day program or yeah. gallon of milk a day or whatever it is it's Ugh. that's that kind of sells more than the just make sure you get five to 15 sets per body part per week getting close to failure with maybe two reps in reserve these kind of things so. right, right right it's not i mean okay so for the general person what we're saying is make sure you get a good warm-up make sure you get some blood flow i, I tell my patients just at a low level 
uh, Bobby's going to be referencing all the legends of working out and I'm going to be tr uh, talking to uh, the Joe that comes into my clinic and is like, are pushups good or pull-ups better? And so like there, there are, there's such a spectrum of people that work out uh, um, that I'm telling these people, look, you need five to 10 minutes of cardio, like get your heart rate flowing, like get your blood flowing through your veins, get a little bit of a sweat going before you get your bicep curls in. Right. And, may, and maybe something in the area of whatever you're going to train. So sure. like yeah. to steal from uh, Ben Patrick, like, mm -hmm. I like his reverse walks, yeah. not because there's anything magical, but like if you go reverse walk on a treadmill for a while, like it really does warm up your knees quite well. Yeah. It gets you used to pressing off your forefoot and, and really warms up the like kind of the non-contractile tissues of the knee, to be honest, just as much as the quad. And then then you kind of feel pretty good when you're ready to do lunges or squats or step ups or whatever you're going to do. So maybe think, OK, today is shoulder day. Right. Maybe, you know, I can do five minutes of general cardio to just heat the body and then right. something to prep, prep that area. Right. right. And when he's talking about Ben Patrick, he's talking about knees over the toes guy. This actually leads into the, the next point. And one of the things I love that backwards, what I, I recommend that to a lot of people, it's a very good general. I mean, I think working out generally is uh, people trying to unwind. There are people trying to grow, you know, but I do think there's a, a healthy swath of young men out there who are like, uh, the gym is my therapy. You know what I mean? I'm getting a lot of my stress out. I just feel better, the endorphins, et cetera, et cetera. But walking backwards literally will unwind some patterns in the body, get the blood flowing, get going. So with knees over the toes guy, I was talking about to Bobby earlier about another topic possibly for this podcast. And knees over the toes guy, um, even the name implies a movement over muscles. And so there is the kind of, we're going to just name drop like crazy, the Dan John idea that uh, when, with your workout, there are pushes, there are pulls, there are squats and hinge. And he adds kind of a fifth, a core element to him. He's like, if you have a very limited amount of time, let's just make sure we get pushes and pulls. So some people are like, you know, early on, they go back and buys and chest and tries, right? That's the classic kind of routine for everybody. But then you kind of get stuck in a certain amount of exercises, right? There's only so many bicep exercises where if you start thinking about pulling exercises, uh, it really opens up the amount of things, the variety of exercises you can do that are pulling related, right? Or pushing related or squat or hinge related. Um, so thinking about movements over muscles, um, and in that sense, it really opens up some variety. Um, I talked about that, but you kind of pushed back. What was your pushback? You had it. You said it earlier in the text thread. And uh, Bobby I don't know, hates I, it. I, no, but I like this. I, I yeah. do like this because otherwise you have the. Well, I mean, if you are a bodybuilder, I mean, then right. Sometimes it makes sense to say, well, okay, I need to really train the vastus lateralis to catch up to my competitors or something. Sure. And you can isolate that as much as you want, or. And there, there's even conflict to whether or not that's the best way to do it is still to think about the muscle individually or to just think about a movement pattern. Sure. But in general, that's a that's a great idea, especially. Well, I mean, in the clinical realm, kind of that's kind of a non sequitur to think of, of isolation, to be honest. Right. Except for maybe immediately post surgery or something. Yeah. Right. We we want uh, patterns because patterns are, you know, movement patterns are how we move. We don't move through the through the single muscle group. Yeah. Well, I was and so I just posted on this. If you don't follow us on Instagram, follow us on Instagram. Uh, best IG out in the world. Uh, movements over muscles and the brain doesn't, I, I wrote on my thing, the brain doesn't think in muscles. Like my brain doesn't say, um, activate the grasping reflex around your phone, uh, activate the pointing reflex point and swipe up. It, 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 it doesn't say flex the bicep and bring thing to like, it says, grab your phone. There are just mm -hmm. smaller patterns to larger patterns that will activate any number of muscles. You know what I mean? And so, again, I, I do think depending on the flip side of the coin from, say, the bodybuilders of I'm going to work on the brachioradialis and I'm doing hammer curls today. Uh, and that's fine. You can you can do that. There is the other kind of Edo Portal world, uh, the MoveNet world, where they are considered with they think about the squat pattern or they talk they talk about the hip flexion pattern, you know. Um, and I think if you see a lot of the best trainers and certainly cl clinicians, their mindset is patterns first and then muscles kind of second. 
And so it's kind of a top down, the pattern funnel starts to wheel down. And so it's not as if you ignore the bicep or the brachioradialis, the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. It's that you think about the group of muscles that might extend that hip and you go, yeah, their hip flexor is probably tight, but I'm first thinking about a hip extension problem, movements over muscles. Yeah. Yeah. And on this like movement patterns first idea, I think mm. uh, a, a really common gym mistake is, you know, if you think, I don't know, ballpark, what do you say the percentage of people that are training with some kind of ache or pain is? Vast, 80-20. Okay. More, okay. more than not. So, okay. So what do you think? You know, Sorry, I think, yeah, I would agree. It's probably something okay. like that. You know, okay. they got an achy knee or a, uh, right. like a pinchy hip or a painful Achilles. They, they got right. something, you know? Yeah. And I think a general rule um, that will bear out, you know, if you if you trust me on this one, might be that if you're going through a pain, if your if your movement is painful, mm, yeah, I think a mistake is it's everything is too bilateral. So mm, the common one. thing that I mean, like I just oil. I have people that train a lot that still don't think to do unilateral stuff and. Right. And I think we were That's talking about one. the guy that was the Lakers trainer. He's he doesn't believe mm -hmm. that you should ever do a bilateral movement. He literally does not ever. believe that there's there's a reason for it. Yeah. And I wouldn't go that far, but I would say working through pain. You know, if your if your hip hurts every time you squat, I don't think you're going to fix your squat by squatting, right. but you right. may fix it by doing a, a, a Bulgarian split squat, or you may or a lunge, it's or true. a unilateral movement, mm -hmm. or hip airplanes, or it doesn't have to be even that advanced or right. loaded. But but when you when you switch to a unilateral movement, now there's a certain coordination, or there's a there's an access to those joints that are not available with you have two feet on the floor, or two hands mm -hmm. on the bar, mm -hmm. you cannot renegotiate, you know, your left hip with the other foot on the ground, sure. but you can with with a split position. Yeah, uh, you, you can, you know, you can force the posterior capsule to expand, you can force, you yeah. know, can keep your big toe down and, and drive into your hip and, and on that good morning and really feel it, you know, there's just there's just Yeah, so that's a general rule that I would say, think about it. If you're like, I can't make any progress on my bench, because it my shoulder hurts after, as soon as I get get to 100 kilos or 200 pounds. Um, yeah. Like my squats been stuck at 200 pounds or, or 300 pounds for the past two years, because it just aches all the time and then once pain sets in we know it's inhibitory and now I'm, that's all i got you know yeah think of breaking it up dude i think i love that one this that's uh mike boyle comes to mind he had a recent post on that and i know many moons ago mike boyle did his uh mike boyle is a boston guy a lot of nhl and baseball players he trains um we'll put a link below to all the references to these guys so we got a bunch of them today but he i remember a long time ago man maybe a 10 years ago did a he bought like two cheap um, weight scales and he had all of his athletes just do a squat or a deadlift and had each foot on a scale. Mm -hmm. And I forget it was some insane number. I don't want to say it was 75, 25, it, but no more than like 60, 40 was ever an athlete, uh, uh, even with bilateral movements. So he's testing bilateral movements, each foot on a scale. And it was like 60, 40, 80, 20. It was crazy how most people were just, and life happens on one foot. Life happens on one arm. And especially sports, especially, you, 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 I mean, even when, you know, they're shooting free throws and both of their feet are down, they're still pushing off one more than one foot and obviously shooting with one hand. So life happens on one side. It behooves you. And, and there's another one. Okay. Uh, I saw Kelly Starrett talked about, uh, he had a great post the other day, K-Star, the ready state on IG, um, a legend in the field was talking about how a lot of us have built up credits in the gym and we need to use them in life. And so I don't know if you saw that one. It was really good out because people are just trying to get bigger PRs in the gym or, or make bigger changes in the gym when really the gym should be preparing you for life. That was kind of CrossFit's thing in the very beginning. They kind of lost it, I think. You know, it's functional workouts, functional meaning. I remember in the beginning, it was like, we could help your friend move. Lifting a couch is functional, you know, lift... Uh, and so if you are working out in the gym, yes, there's an aesthetic component to it. If you're a Jeff Nippard, you're, you're a bodybuilder, you're a physique guy, of course, you're trying to get the body to look presentable. That's obviously a thing. But like work on bending and reaching to touch your toes. Like, I think that's more of what a deadlift is doing. Yeah. Do you have anything on that? I mean... Yeah, on this exact topic, I think one big mistake would be to think that the gym is is really your 
preparation for life. And mm -hmm. that's a mistake. And I think True. Uh, it's not a mistake, but it is, um, it's not really, uh, it's a bad point. Bet. It's a bad, it's, yeah. It's like what Kelly was saying was see if that stuff is even giving you real life movement capability. Like see if yes. you can still run and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. And, and like I was listening to Mark Bell's podcast and mm -hmm. the Insema is one of the co-hosts on the show mm -hmm. and he's just insanely jacked ripped up really strong a guy, brazilian jiu-jitsu guy mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and he he was commenting that he did all these hikes recently and it was it was like after all this hiking and walking that he just done recently that he just started to feel so much better and and i think you know to somebody like john and i it really just starts to like it's like a light bulb that makes complete sense yeah and it's it's kind of like when i'm sure there's a listener that knows when they hit the heavy bag and kicked the bag or they went for like not a jog where you're literally catching yourself step by step but like right. sprints or you went on a long hike or you mm -hmm. just did full body uh you know attacking the, the heavy bag you just kind of felt different there's just yeah. a different feeling that your your psychology gives you uh, the hormones that are released the way your hips feel when you're done like as opposed to a squat which is you know, we know that every squat is different, uh, you know, by, by these studies, but in reality, it's still to me, like you're, like you're a train on a track. Yeah. Uh, and when you're, when you're hiking on a mountain, you, you're not, you, you are the, you're the hoverboard in, in, in uh, back to the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. Get off the, the track. There, there's nothing. I, I think, yeah, there's a ditch on both sides of the road. I don't think it's, you know, the Lakers guy, I understand he's where he's at because he's training athletes, but it's okay to do a squat with weight on your back. It's okay to do a deadlift with your feet squared up, but uh, don't get stuck on that train track. I love that analogy, Bobby. That's actually perfect. And I think this is the best way to finish off the podcast. How do you like to end? Oh, ho. Uh -huh. No, I mean, the, the, I had one point I wanted to yeah, end yeah, on. Yeah, get but... it, get it, yeah. Oh, okay. No, I still think yeah. there's no more that emphasis that I wanted to, you know, to push more than that that Russian version versus, versus Bulgarian mentality, oh, right? Oh, yeah, let's go for that, yeah. Right, the let's the idea yeah, of, you know, sure. sacrificing sacrificing the, the long-term goals or long-term mm -hmm gains for the for the short term, you know, uh, dopamine or the short term Absolutely. goals of, or, or just maxing out or getting a new PR. And I think if you, you know, if you look at the, the Bulgarian lifters, they're broken. And those are just the ones that survived and won the gold medal and got the glory. You don't see the Busted. other 99% that never made it through training right. camp, uh, because they just just obliterated them. And now they're, you know, heavy set people, you know, with bad knees because they can't move very well. Meanwhile, right. Klokov is still like, I don't Lifting know. Lifting in his he's kitchen. Still, he's still competing <laughs> in the open and, you know, doing ridiculous numbers. And so do, so does like, you know, his, his uncle and his, uh, you know, know older know. family members. And you got people like Jersey Gregorick, who I just quoted in our, in our stories uh, yesterday. Best like, quote that ever. That guy can still do, What's the that quote? guy can still do fist to fist overhead uh, fist to fist overhead squats, you know, butt to heels, flat, no no shoes on, and I don't know how old he is. He's sixty years old or something now. Yeah, sorry, Jersey, if you're oh. not even close to that, but I, well, yeah, because he we know Jersey listens. Shout out Jersey, shout yeah. out Dimitri, all the Russians who listen. I know you guys are tuned in, uh, but no, uh, I mean think about so a lot of people, specifically Americans. I know we have some non-American listeners. We're very interested in the short-term goals. We, summer's coming up. We're going to be out at the pool. We're going to be out the lake. There's a wedding coming up. I understand there are some immediate short-term goals. But if you can get your perspective, I mean, we had this on a podcast I talked about a long time ago, this tattoo artist who was tattooing people. And he's like, I want my tattoos to look good in a decade. If you had to work out and look good, feel good in a decade, you would make some different decisions in the gym there are about a million more mistakes i think we could go to today what's the, what's the anthony robbins quote is uh most people under or overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years right and, and uh, I, that's kind of my life up to now in a nutshell to be honest yeah, and, and to be honest it didn't lead to the best results so i'm trying to almost follow this advice we're giving right here and start to think a little bit long term and, and you know, move well later and maybe move more athletically. And I mean, if you compete in a sport, by all means, I, I support the the Brian Shaw's or if you're trying to set the new 
deadlift world record, but these guys are so few and far between. And yeah, and even 1%, for those guys, yeah. you don't have to be broken. You know, you you don't have to be. That's that's what actually do you mean you don't shock have to, be, to most. You to, don't have to be broken. Like you don't have to be the the world record holder in the in the deadlift and then be broken after you do it. Sure. There are people that still go on to move completely well after that. It's not it's yeah. not like it's a prerequisite to to winning the world's strongest man. You know, or the or True. the or the squat world record. So, well, dude, we but, I but mean, a, we all. Yeah. Amongst we, the mortals, like who, who, you know, who care? It's fun. I understand yeah. that, but then spread your fun out and, and have fun over various years. There is, I mean, we've, if we played college sports, we know some professional athletes. There's just a certain breed of human that can just do things that like Ocho Cinco eats McDonald's before every NFL game he played. He, he's a hall of fame wide receiver. Like there's just freak athletes out there that are just incredible. The rest of us mere mortals, if we made a few less mistakes in the gym and we thought in the long term uh, and we smashed a bag of, uh, of Sour Patch Kids between sets, uh, you know, maybe our workouts would be a little bit better. But that's it for today. Quick and short. Uh, if you haven't already, smash that like button. Leave a comment. What do you think are the biggest mistakes? If you haven't left a review for us on iTunes, please do that. We appreciate the support very much. Um, Y'all have a great day. Thanks for listening. Peace. Thanks. See ya.